Hello everybody, welcome to lecture 7 of our course Computing Ethics and Society. In this lecture we're gonna start in chapter 3 Freedom of Speech. In this lecture the topics to be covered communication paradigms and controlling speech. Let's start with communication paradigms. The purpose here is to regulate the communications media. The typical communications media include print media such as newspaper, magazines, box, uh, broadcasts such as television, radio, uh, and common carries such as telephones, postal system. Common carries provide medium of communication and make service available to everyone. So, regulation uh, of all these media was stated in the first amendment. This Telecommunication Act clarified the question of liability of internet service providers and other online service providers for content posted by third parties such as members and subscribers. This act focused on internet. So the first law of internet censorship was established. Now let's move to free speech principles. These principles written for offensive and or controversial speech and item to cover spoken and written words, pictures, art, and other forms of expression of ideas and opinions. The restrictions here are on the government side, not on the individual or people side or the business side. Here are more principles and guidelines made by Superior Court. In these principles, new rules and regulations made regarding advertisements and anonymity. For details, go to page 138 in the book. Now, how to control speech? Let's discuss first offensive speech. So what is offensive and what is not? Also, what is legal and what is illegal? The answers depend on who you are. Most efforts to censor the internet focus on pornographic and other sexually explicit material. For example, you may find some websites that are available in some countries but are not available or prohibited in others such as pornographic sites or political sites so in some countries these websites are restricted but other countries allow people to see these websites. These are some guidelines of freedom of speech. First, distinguish speech from action. Advocating illegal acts is usually legal. Laws must not chill expression of legal speech. Do not reduce adults to reading only what is fit for children. Finally, solve speech problems by least restrictive means. Internet censorship laws and alternatives. The main purpose of uh, these laws is to control the internet. The first act regarding this was on 1996. So after that laws were updated or changed especially regarding the children protect as in this act it is stated that it is a crime to make available 
to anyone under 18 any obscene or indecent communication. In this act, more restrictions were made. So, it became crime for commercial websites to make available to minors material harmful to minors as judged by community standards. In Children's Internet Protection Act of 2000, more protection was made. So, this act required schools and libraries yeah, libraries that participate in certain federal programs to install filtering software. Now let's move to alternatives to censorship. Actually, there are two main alternatives to censorship. The first one is filters. Filters block sites with specific words, phrases, or images, and make it easy uh, for parents to control the content their children may watch, especially for sex and violence. Filters usually updated frequently, but may still screen out too much or the elimination of all errors and the contents to be blocked. The second alternative is policies. Policies are those developed to protect members in commercial services, online communications, and social networking sites. Also, there is something called rating systems that's commonly used in the video game industry. This rating system provides an indication for parents about the amount of sex, profanity, and violence in a game that a parent may buy for their children. Spam what does spam mean? The term spam in the context of electronic communications such as emails was adopted in the 19s. Uh, spam means unsolicited black emails and desirable emails. It now applies to text messages, tweets and phone calls as well. Spam developed because email is extremely cheap compared to a printed direct mail advertising. The most spam emails are advertisement or commercial advertisement and this make uh, people angry because of the content and the way spams have sent. The anti-spam laws focus on the advertisement messages. The anti-spam law on Can Spam Act covers the labeling of advertising messages, opt-out provisions, and methods of generating emailing lists. In this law, they describe commercial messages with certain features. Commercial messages must include first valid mail header information that is not no faking the form line to disguise the sender is prohibited. Second, valid return address. Finally, clear and honest subject lines. So, if the message contains these three conditions it should not be a spam otherwise it will be spam finally this is the discussion question consider this question and uh, try to answer it with your classmate do you consider the internet an appropriate tool 
for young children why or why not and we reach to the end of our lecture and see you in the next lecture